State versus George Zimmerman. Are we ready to, oh, did you have an opportunity to talk to Mr. Zimmerman about the? Right after at the end when we break for the sure. primary Thank you. Yes. Are we ready to bring in our next uh, potential juror? Yes, sure. Defense? Yes, sure. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Please be seated. Good afternoon, sir. Um, you will continue to be referred to as juror H27. The attorneys are going to ask you questions about the questionnaire you filled out on Tuesday morning. And we're going to begin with Mr. De La Ronda. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, we're going to refer to you as the court stated as H27. Yes, sir. Um, and you know what? We're, you're here. You're here. This is the first part of trying to pick a jury. We're talking, focusing just on uh, what you filled out of the questionnaire, what you've heard about the case, what comments you've made, if any, you know, or comments have been made to you, that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Okay. Now I've got here that you only put in terms of what you've heard about the case, just TV news clips. Uh, it's been mainly on on uh, the TV news, uh, some discussions with coworkers. Okay. That sort of thing. So TV news clips would be what? Uh, local stations, national stations, both? Uh, mostly local. Okay. Which local? I uh, usually listen to uh, Channel 9. Okay. And um, so no national? So I sometimes tune into national news, sure. but uh, basically uh, usually local news. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, when I say national, obviously I'm not asking you in terms of national like Fox or CNN or whatever. I'm talking about related to this case. You have not listened to anything related to this case on national news? If I've tuned into CNN and they run a clip, uh, I might have heard some, but um, I haven't gone looking for it. Okay. So CNN is the only one? Uh, that's usually who I go to if I go to national. Okay. And is there any particular reason you go to CNN? Uh, I just remember what it is on my uh, oh, okay. remote. Okay. I think it's channel 200 and 202 on my remote. No, and, and do you think, do you think CNN has got a bias one way or the other? Some people think it's more liberal, you know, versus like Fox is more conservative. I, got, I've, I've heard some of that, but um, I haven't really noticed. Okay. And um, how about the uh, newspaper? Any reading of the newspaper, getting any information about the case from the newspaper? Yeah, I read the paper, uh, but bring it to work, we do the crossword puzzle and things gotcha, like that. Gotcha, gotcha. But you don't, you don't recall reading about this case in the newspaper, or you did? I probably read some sure. about it. Okay, it's okay. I'm just trying to get the sources and then I'll talk about what you remember about from each source, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, because I, the reason I'm asking, you only put TV news clips, so I'm trying to jot your memory to see if there yeah, was Yeah, that's pr primary, okay. primary source. How about on the internet? Do you do any like Facebooking? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. And uh, anything else regarding the internet? Uh, no, we might have had some conversations. Um, my sister is a cop in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Uh, she might have asked me, um, you know, hey, I heard about this case. Um, is this close to you? That sort of thing. And I know you've provided some information already here on your questionnaire. So we're on purpose, just like we're referring to you as H27, we're also not commenting about where you work. You understand? On yes, purpose. Sir. I know where you work, so I'm not going to ask you, but so if I ask you anything regarding this reference, I already know where you work. You don't have to tell me. Okay. You understand from the media standpoint, so they don't know where you work, unless you want to tell them, but you don't have to. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. And the reason, as you mentioned, your sister's a cop in, in Las Vegas, you don't need to tell anything more other than that, unless you want to. Okay. Um, now, when you say you talk to your sister, you're talking about just on the phone, you talk to her about the case, or she asks you about the case? Uh, mainly on Facebook because of irregular hours. And I got you. There, okay, there are three she'll hours. She'll pop up that she's online, and we'll send a message back. Gotcha. Before. Anything else related to any other internet source? No, I'm not, not real big at tweeting or any, any of that you stuff. Don't, you've never posted anything about this case at all? Um, I don't think I posted, but I might have um, discussed it with some other people I know. Well, let's, well, we're, okay, anything else regarding the internet or anything like that? Uh, I donated to the defense fund um, some time ago. You did? Yes. When you say defense fund, you're talking about George Zimmerman's GZ? Yeah, that was, that was through the internet. Okay. And, okay, I'm just trying to write these down as you're speaking. Donated to, and how long ago was that, you think? 
Uh, it was right when it started. So was that through a PayPal or was yeah, that? Yeah, I believe it was PayPal. I, I figured you guys probably had a list of donors. Okay. How much did you donate? I think it was twenty dollars. Okay. And is there a reason why you donated? Uh, it just seemed like um, he was an underdog. There was marches against him, death threats. Um, couldn't work. Had to go into hiding. Just seemed uh, he was getting piled on. I kind of felt sorry for. Okay. Yeah, you're the first juror we've had that has donated to either side or has been involved, and that's why I asked. Uh, is that the only time, or did you donate again? I believe it was just the one time. Okay. How come you didn't donate when there later was a, like a GC Legal or whatever other sites were? Uh, well, they had uh, a lot of pe uh, outside people coming in and leading marches and a lot of uh, media coverage, and it seemed the media was pretty much uh, allied against him. And so you, you felt he was the underdog? Mr. Yes. Zimmerman, I say. Yes. Right. Is that what you refer to the underdog? Yes. Okay. Do you still feel that way? Uh, pretty much. When the media refers to him, they uh, tend to uh, seem to me to be biased. Right. And you don't believe you're biased at all? Um, I, I have an opinion, but I'd be open-minded to uh, any kind of evidence that I haven't heard yet. Okay. So your opinion is what? I think Mr. Zimmerman was trying to do the right thing. and things kind of spiraled out of control. Why do you think he was trying to do the right thing? Uh, Central Florida's got a big crime problem. I'd heard that there was uh, burglaries and problems in his neighborhood, and he was just, I think, just trying to look out for his neighbors. But how do you believe he wasn't in the wrong and what he did? That's my opinion from what No, no, I understand. I I'm just trying to get where you, where you, where you base your opinion because you're saying Central Florida's got a big crime problem? And I'd, I'd heard that there had been burglaries in the neighborhood and possibly other problems, and he saw someone suspicious, and he called the police and tried to uh, uh, keep an eye on him until the police could arrive and do their job. Sure. And so you're, you're pretty committed that that's what your belief is on that, correct? That's, that, that's my opinion from what I've heard so far, but I probably haven't heard the whole story. Go ahead, ask your next question. Okay. So you believe at this time that uh, he was right in what he did, I think you've already stated, correct? Correct. Okay. What other basis do you have for believing what he did other than there was crimes in the neighborhood and Central Florida's got a big crime area? Right. Uh, that, that's, that's mainly it. Uh, I've been in the same situation where I've been in my house. I see someone acting suspicious. I haven't followed them. The police get there. By the time they get there, the person's long gone. Oh, so you can relate to that, that yes. Mr. Zimmerman was frustrated that he, the person was gone? Is that what you mean? Yes, I've, okay. I've, I've had the same thing happen in my neighborhood. Gotcha. Are you also a neighborhood watch guy? No. Okay, you're just a homeowner who cares about your property and doesn't like burglars and that guy and stuff? Correct. We've got a, our neighbors in our corner of the street uh, kind of look out for each other, sure. call each other, hey, I saw somebody by your house. That's what I got you. So you had a similar circumstance where you saw somebody breaking into your house, or no? They were they were walking around, kind of looking at houses. We didn't recognize them, and uh, the okay. house was empty, and we were concerned. My objection is outside the scope of the limited nature of this aspect. So, Stan, these are the kinds of questions that can be asked during regular or dire. I believe this is germane to his bias in terms of publicity, in terms of knowledge. Well, knowledge. you can ask him questions about what publicity he has. Okay, I'll to. Sure. Thank you. okay. Um, I would also suggest that this kind of question would be individual regarding this particular juror, so not to contaminate all the other jurors about his personal beliefs in terms of his personal doings in relation to this case. Okay. You still feel that you can be objective? Yes, sir. You have not formed an opinion in this case. I have an opinion, but I've got an open mind also. Okay. So you have formed an opinion? Yes. Okay. Why did you in your questionnaire put that you had not formed an opinion? Uh, if I'd read the follow-up question to that, I would have answered it differently. But um, I wasn't solid in my opinion, but could be open-minded. The, uh, the questionnaire made it sound like um, an absolute opinion. Well, you just... I think stated a few minutes ago that you had formed an opinion as to the guilt or innocence that you believe he was innocent, right? 
I, I, I can approach it with an open mind. So, okay, there's an objection. What's the objection? The mischaracterization of the prospective juror's uh, statement. Okay, he gave an answer that he could keep an open mind. So you're saying that you, you made a mistake. You should have put on there that you had formed an opinion as to the guilt or innocence, correct? Yes. Okay, so it should have been yes, correct? Correct. Okay. But you're saying that then you would have answered question number four that you, regardless of that opinion, you could have kept an open mind. That's you correct. You would keep an open mind. I, I, I marked that one before I read the following question. Okay. Well, tell me about why you you wanted to say yes. Why would you, did you want to say yes as to question number three that you had formed an opinion as to the defendant's guilt or innocence? Because I think I can keep an open mind and it's not an absolute opinion. Well, how absolute is it? Or how firm is it? Uh, I don't know. 80%? 90%? 95%? Uh, uh, maybe 70%. Okay. And you feel 70% you can still keep an open mind? Sure. Uh, Haven't the, you kind of made up your mind already? All I've heard is the media accounts. I haven't heard all the, all the evidence, and I'm sure there's a lot that hasn't been brought out yet. Well, what have you heard in the media events that convince you that he's innocent? Uh, his story seems to uh, jive with what the witnesses are, that uh, he was on the ground, that uh, the victim was on top of him. He was, if he was out for no good, uh, he wouldn't have called 911 and been on the call with the uh, emergency operator if he was out to, to start some trouble. He you don't, you don't call the cops and have them come if you're uh, out to no good. But what, 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 why else do you believe he was innocent? He is innocent. Uh, I believe that uh, you're entitled to self-defense. You feel your life is in danger, and uh, this sounds like it might uh, qualify as that. And why is that? Uh, apparently, uh, he had the victim on top of him beating his head into the sidewalk, and that seems to me that I'd feel my, my life was in danger if I was in those circumstances also. Okay. So in other words, you, you're firm in your belief that he was being beaten and he had the right to use self-defense? That seems to be what the, uh, has been reported so far. Okay. And that's what you're relying on? Yes. So you go in with a premise that that's accurate? No. Well, that's, that's what I've heard so far, but that doesn't mean that's the whole story or that's the whole truth. The uh, media is out to uh, have people watch the news and to sell newspapers, not to uh, actually tell the truth. You think the media has all been in favor of or against Mr. Zerman? Uh, mostly. One of the news outlets was uh, in trouble for doctoring a 911 recording that they so, played. So. Really, you've done an extensive review of this case, haven't you? Uh, I watch the news, and even if I don't watch the news, you've got uh, teaser clips during the network shows. Okay. Well, tell me what else you remember about the case. Uh, that's, that's most of it. Um, he was following him at a distance. Um, he lost sight of him. He was walking back to his truck when the victim approached him from behind. There was an altercation. He was hit, knocked to the ground, and the uh, victim was on top of him, beating on him. And there was a witness that also saw that. Who was the witness? I don't think they uh, identified him. One of the people that called 911. Did, but how, how did you how did you gain that? How did you get that information that there was a witness that saw him? It was on the one of the news channels. Okay. And what else have you heard? Um, that was most of it. So after reviewing that part of it, you came to the conclusion or the opinion that he was innocent, correct? Correct. Okay. What else have you heard? Have you heard anything negative about what Mr. Zerman did? Um, I heard that uh, there was an altercation at a bar or something like that. Well, tell me about that. Um, some type of altercation. I don't remember if it was he was convicted or? Oh, you're talking about Mr. Zierman was? Yes. Okay, I misunderstood, okay. And how does that factor into your opinion at all about whether he's guilty or, or innocent? Oh, it didn't sound like anything serious. You think people have a right to, to get into fights at a bar? I don't remember if it, he was arrested for it and released or if there was, it went to court. I don't, sure. didn't really hear any details besides. Do you remember who the media stated he got into a fight with? 
I think it might have been a security guard or an off-duty cop or something like that. So you, that in your assessment of, of the facts didn't factor in against Mr. Zimmerman at all? I didn't really hear if it went anywhere, if it was just um, ran into someone and they arrested him or and it was dropped or if it went further. If it went further, you think you could still be fair to Mr. Zimmerman? Uh, I Having could, known that? I could be fair, but that might factor into you know, my judge of, judgment of character. Tell me about that. What do you mean by that? Well, someone that's never been in trouble before, you, you tend to give them more breaks than someone that's uh, constantly had run-ins. Yeah, 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 again, outside the limited scope of this. Um, since he's inquiring about information that he had heard in the media regarding that, I will give some leeway. Tell, tell me if you could about that. What did you mean? That you're saying if he had gotten in trouble before that... I, don't want to, I can't speak for you. You got to tell that. Uh, if someone's a chronic offender, then uh, they've kind of developed a pattern of behavior. If someone maybe has had one altercation in five or ten years, then that's more forgivable than someone that uh, has one every six months. I got you. What else have you heard about the case? Um, that's most of it. Um, a lot of talk about the uh, outside people coming in and trying to turn it into a racial issue, which I don't really think it was. What did you think of the outside people coming in? When you say out pe outside people, what do you mean? Uh, there's some people that make a uh, living off of uh, stirring things up and trying to turn things into a uh, racial issue when there really is none. I got you. And who are those people? Uh, Mr. Jackson and Mr. Sharpton. Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't, like those people I gather by your comments? Not, not okay. particularly. They seem to just be out there to uh, stir up trouble and get their face on the news. What else have you heard? That's, that's most of what I've heard. Okay. I haven't really followed the case that much, but just what I've seen on the news. And the information that you gleaned from the news, was that at the beginning or throughout? That was, I turn on the news in the morning, go to check okay. for traffic and weather sure. to go to work, and uh, I think I heard about it that, that the morning after. You mentioned that on the internet, I'm sorry, I interrupted, I, did you read finish, sir? Excuse me? Were you done, or did yes. I interrupt? I apologize. You, so you basically just in the morning or when you get from home from work, you see it? Yes. Okay. Um, have you done any research on the internet? No, not really. Okay. Well, how did it come about that you ended up um, sending money towards Mr. Zerman's defense. I mean, it's on the news. No, no, I understand, but you just kind of took, you're saying you don't really believe the news or you do? Well, they said that uh, they were, there was a defense fund and I went to the site and it said you could donate by PayPal, so. Right, I guess my question is, how did you decide that you wanted to contribute to his defense fund if you weren't sure that the truth, that the media was accurate. I thought, thought you said earlier that you didn't always believe what the media said. True. It seems like you came to the conclusion that the media was accurate and that you needed to contribute to his campaign or to his fund, didn't you? It, it seemed, well, they seemed biased, but uh, they seemed biased against him. So you didn't believe the media or you did? I figured there's uh, some truth in it, but uh, I didn't know if it was 100% correct. They portrayed the victim initially is uh, being about 10 or 12 years old by their picture. Um, okay. Was it more because you were anti-victim in this case or because you were pro-Zimmerman? Uh, I was pro-Zimmerman. Okay, but I, I guess what I'm still having an a hard time understanding is if you felt the media, what they stated was not accurate, what made you decide to contribute to his fund in other words, because all you've said right now is you're saying supported Zimmerman, but you're saying that wasn't accurate. Well, I'm not saying that they don't report any of the story. I'm saying they slant it to uh, whatever's going to create a sensation and keep people watching. Sure. That doesn't mean that uh, it's not some truth in it. Okay. Well, what you've told me so far is that you believe Mr. Zimmerman was defending himself because he was acting as a homeowner out there and he saw somebody suspicious and followed. And and what did he do? When he was he saw trying, him, trying to follow him while on the phone with the uh, 911 okay. people. And then tell me again what you believe happened? Uh, the story that I heard was that he had lost sight of the victim. He was returning to his vehicle. 
and that the victim approached him. There was an altercation and the uh, victim hit him, broke his nose and knocked him to the ground and was beating his head against the sidewalk. Okay. And you believe that to be true? I saw pictures that showed him with injuries that supported that and there was a witness that said he saw the uh, victim on top of the defendant. So in other words, you, you believe that all to be true, or at least... Uh, the, the pictures and sure. the seem to support it. So you already concluded certain things were accurate. Uh, right. picture, pictures could have been staged, but... No, but I mean, it's just your opinion is what counts, not yes. matter what. And that's why you ended up contributing money to his defense fund. Yes, sir. Okay. So you already came to the conclusion that this man was being framed or he was innocent, and then you decided based on what you knew from the media that you wanted to contribute to his campaign fund. Correct. Right? Okay. But, and you don't think that in any, that in any way you, means that you're biased in favor of Mr. Zimmerman and against the state of Florida? I, I have a favorable opinion now, but I can have an open mind if I see evidence to the contrary. You don't think the fact that you've already spent, sent money to his, don't you have kind of a stake in this already? Well, I, I can see where you're coming from with that. I mean, let, let's be perfectly honest. Yes. Here. Wouldn't you agree? How, how many, uh, have you ever heard of I, I object, Mr. Dillard, on suggesting somehow that this juror hasn't been honest. I don't think that that's what the question was. So. The question was. Let's be did, perfectly honest. Was the predicate to the Okay. Question. We'll rephrase your question. And I think that this area is outside the limited purpose of this. Uh, this part of your Um Overall. You you've got a stake in this. You've already contributed to his cause, correct? Correct. The trial, and you still think, even though you've already contributed to his defense, that you can sit there and just want everybody to disregard the fact that you've contributed to his defense? Do I didn't say that. you think that's unfair? I said I could keep an open mind. I apologize. Thanks. I said I could keep an open mind. I would not want to say whether he was guilty or innocent without listening to all the facts. Right, but you've already contributed to his fund. True. And I was honest about that. Right. I'm not trying to hide anything. You don't think we would have found out, somebody would have found out? Probably would have. That's why I was up front about it. I think the, the questionnaire asked if I can keep an open mind, and I believe I could keep an open mind. Right. The other question I had is, don't you think that would have been important to put on the questionnaire under question six? I kind of expected to have another questionnaire to be vetted before being questioned uh, in court like this. In other that, words, the, the question number six was, is there any other matter not covered by this questionnaire that should be brought to the attention of the courts because it would affect your ability to be a fair and impartial juror. You don't think at that time you would have put, you should have put on there that you contributed to his defense fund? That might uh, affect whether you think that I can be fair or not, but I don't think that that matters whether I can be fair or not. But, but don't you think it would have been a good thing to let both sides in the court know that? Up front? If you weren't trying to hide anything? Overruled. Don't you think that would have been important for you to, to put that down if you weren't trying to hide anything? No, you didn't ask me about uh, Facebook post or whether I discussed this at my work. There was uh, a lot of things that might affect your opinion about whether I can be impartial that I didn't put on there. Okay, what other things could affect your, your, your opinion about whether you can be impartial? Uh, please uh, educate well, us. What you've already asked me, whether I've discussed it with friends, whether I've uh, made Facebook posts. <laughs> There's probably a, a long list of things that uh, you'd like to ask. Okay, tell me you. about those. What, with the f discussions with friends, you, gave, you opinionated that you thought he was innocent, I'm assuming, right? Well, it's, it's happened in, uh, locally. I have friends that live in Lake Mary, Sanford, Longwood, that uh, you know, live, clo live close to those areas than I do. So, of course, it's a matter of discussion. Of course, and you, your opinion, you stated your opinion was that you thought he was innocent. Sure, we have some people that um, think that he was stalking and shot him in cold blood and others that uh, sure. think he uh, acted in self-defense. You've got uh, all sorts of opinions. Right, and you were on the side that you felt he was innocent and acted in self-defense. Correct. You've prejudged this case. Not prejudged, but I have an opinion. Okay, and our opinion is pretty firm. 
Well, we already said uh, about probably 70%. 70, what did you say, 70%? That's what we said earlier. Okay, all right. Now, tell me uh, the discussions you had with people that, friends or, or, or co-workers, you said that there was some of the opinion that thought that Mr. Zimmerman was guilty, correct? Of course. What did they, what did they argue uh, on behalf of uh, the fact that they thought Mr. Zimmerman was guilty? No, that, that uh, it was justified that uh, he's following this poor kid and the poor kid was just defending himself. Okay. And you didn't think he was following him, correct? No, I, I don't think that uh, just because you think you're being followed means you can uh, attack someone. So you do believe that Mr. Zimmerman was following Trayvon Martin? Sure. Okay, you that's, do believe that? That's admitted to. They have uh, telephone transcripts of him telling the operator that. Okay, so I appreciate you telling us that. When you heard of that, you came to the conclusion that that was accurate, correct? Uh, right. They have him on uh, tape saying that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm watching him until the police get here. And so in other words, he was following to make sure that Mr. Trayvon Martin didn't, didn't get away because he thought he was a criminal? Objection. That mischaracterizes what this prospective juror said. It's a conclusion that Mr. Delariondo wants to ask this juror to assent to. I'm if, fine again. I'll be glad to ask you. Can rephrase your question, please? When you said that you came to the conclusion that Mr. Zimmerman was following Trayvon Martin, what do you mean by that? He, he was trying to keep him in sight so that he could point him out to the deputies when they came and they could uh, see if he belonged in the neighborhood or sure. had a criminal history and whether he's up to no good or not. Right. And, and your belief was what related to the facts as you know that Mr. Trayvon Martin was up to no good or what was he doing there? He was apparently acting suspicious. I don't never heard mm -hmm. uh, to what extent if he was looking in people's windows or what the suspicious behavior was. So you believe Mr. Zerman's statement about that, that he was acting suspicious? It, well, I guess that's his opinion of how he was acting. You agree with that? I, I agree that that was his opinion. I wasn't there and I didn't hear details on uh, what the suspicious behavior was. Right. So then how did you come to the ultimate conclusion, 70% 70, 70 that he is innocent? Uh, it boils down to uh, did something happen where you're in an altercation where you're fear, fearful of your life? Right, but you, you already assumed as concrete fact that Mr. Zimmerman had the right to defend himself. Correct. Right? Okay. The stand your ground law. Right. Are you a big proponent of the stand your ground law, I gather? Yes, I am. Okay. And does that factor into the equation of your belief that Mr. Zimmerman is innocent? Yes, the, the law states. Object as well. It's still outside the scope here. Sustained. Now we're talking about legal That's the Did you hear as part of the media commentary about this case about standing your ground? Yes. Okay. Tell me about that, what you heard about that. Well, what I've heard about the law? No, well, just related to this case. That uh, if you're fearful for your life, that uh, you don't have to run away or try to escape. If you're in your house, you don't have to run out the back door. Right. You can stand your ground. Okay. And you did in terms of the commentary, your, in terms of your conclusion here, or your opinion about 70% that he's innocent, um, you applied your understanding of what the law was said related to this case to this facts, right? You, you can't uh, retreat if uh, someone's on top of you uh, attacking you. you. Well, how do you know that somebody was on top of Mr. Zimmerman? Uh, that's what I heard that uh, his statement was, and there's a witness that uh, verified it. So you've already concluded that the statement was accurate? No. I'm, I'm stating that that was his statement and there is a witness that uh, corroborates it. You've already concluded that that statement by a witness corroborates what he said? Seems to. Okay. But you still feel that you can just disregard that if that's not accurate? If you have two witnesses that say they saw something else and possibly this other one was biased. I'm not, I, like I said, um, I'd like to hear all the statements from both sides before making a concrete decision. You mentioned conversations with, uh, was it your sister? I think you said that's what cop? Yes. Did I get that right? I don't know if it was your sister or brother. I apologize. Sister. Okay. Did you comment, did you have discussions with her about the case? Uh, basically, uh, did you hear about this? Uh, is this, did this happen close to you? That sort of thing. 
was it? Uh, she didn't ask. I don't remember any uh, details. No, no. Did you give her your opinion too about that he was innocent? I don't recall. It okay. was back when it first when the news first broke okay. over a year ago. And I don't mean to re keep re-asking this. When you contributed to the fund, when was it? I don't know that I asked you that before. Twenty dollars. No, no, no. Not how much. I apologize. When was it? When? Uh, shortly after it was established, when uh, there was the marches and the death threats and all the... Gotcha. This happened February of 2012, for points of reference, February 26. Do you recall soon after that? When the news said that um, they've started a defense fund, that he's in hiding, he can't work. And okay. Was that before he was arrested or after he was arrested? It was after, I believe. Okay. Uh, was Mr. Romero already his attorney, to your knowledge, at the time you contributed to this fund? I don't recall okay. who started when. Uh, now, have you, you, you said you had or had not commented about this case? You um, mean on Facebook? Yeah, or anywhere. Uh, well, there might have been some discussions with people. Uh, I've got some uh, friends that are out of state, and they might have commented, and I might have commented back. I don't recall specifics. Do you have... Um, on your, is Facebook a thing where you can put like likes and dislikes kind of things? My wife and kids do. Oh yeah. Don't you have something where you can put favorites or something? Yes. Do you have anything uh, on that Facebook related to the case? I really couldn't tell you yes or no. Okay. Might you have a picture of George Zimmerman on your Facebook account? I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't. I don't think okay. so. I'm not. Right. I'm not saying for sure. Okay. If you had what? So you you don't think you have? Okay. If you had, wouldn't you agree that that would show really a bias in favor of Mr. Zimmerman? I would agree. It's outside the uh, limited nature of this. I don't know if it was showing a, bi a bias. I already told you my uh, opinion is uh, inclined towards him, but uh, I don't say, say it would be biased. A so bias you, believe, you, you believe if a juror has contributed to somebody's fund, defense fund, and then might have a picture of George Zimmerman on their Facebook, that juror could still be objective? Yes. You think that would be true also if somebody was in favor of Trayvon Martin, had a picture of Trayvon Martin, had contributed to any kind of uh, fund to help the family, that would still be objective on the other side too? I would like to think anyone would be objective when they're dealing in a case like this. Okay. I got it. You've never been a juror before, have you? No, I haven't. This is your first time? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry to get crazy about this. Um, have you mentioned anything else on Facebook related to this case? I don't recall. I may have. I may not. Uh, well, there was, there was can, a lot of talk about the, the, the marches. Tell me about what you recall, if you did post, what you did post about that. That I think that Mr. Zimmerman was trying to be a good neighbor and um, had a 17-year-old that probably... Uh, you know, at 17, you think you're you're bulletproof and uh, 10 feet tall. So you've already come to that conclusion based on what? I remember being a 17-year-old. Okay. So we would have to prove otherwise to you, correct? I'm just saying that was my my personal experience sure. at that age. And you would factor that in. I wouldn't jump on uh, an adult at that age, but uh, you. <laughs> Do a lot, take a lot of chances that you wouldn't normally at uh, older age. So you believe that Mr. Trayvon Martin already, because of his age, was more uh, daring, I guess, to use it, my word? Yeah, uh, outside the scope. Now we're asking this. Okay, sustained. Judge, <coughs> responding to his question or his comment, that, that I'm just you asking. Can, you can check to Facebook, the media. Okay. okay, you mentioned Facebook something about, uh, I guess, Mr. Trayvon Martin was 17 years old. Tell me a little bit about that. I uh, heard he was 17, uh, that he'd been suspended from school. He was up here with his uh, father. Um, uh, that, was, that was most of it. Uh, they never did say what he, I don't believe what he was suspended for, but. Would that be germane to you? Would that be important to them? If, uh, he had a history of uh, fighting and, and violent behavior, yes, that would be uh, appropriate. And did you already come to the conclusion that he did have that history? No, I'm saying if he did, that um, I don't know if that's what he was suspended for or not. Okay. Well, if you were just, if you heard no evidence of whether he was suspended or not, nothing about what happened in school, 
could you forget about that in arriving at your decision in this case? Yes. Okay. I, th I think his background would uh, be the same as if Mr. Zimmerman had a history of uh, violent behavior or, or run-ins with, with people. What, uh, have you, did you tell me everything you had heard about Mr. Zimmerman? Yes. Okay. Um, have you made any comment, other commentary on Facebook or any other social media about this case, any aspect of this case, whether about the protest or the people that were involved in the protest or that kind of stuff? Sure. Um, just what I've already said that, um, you know, we had some people trying to turn it into a, a racial thing, which I don't care if the person's black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever, if they're acting suspicious in my neighborhood, I'd be concerned. It wouldn't be, oh, there's a white kid over there. Sure acting suspiciously, but, oh, he's probably not up to anything. I, you keep this, I guess it's the second time you mentioned somebody in your neighborhood. You mentioned prior time. Is there a second time that somebody was acting suspicious in your neighborhood? Oh, there have been several times. Okay. And what was the color of the individuals that were acting suspicious in your neighborhood? Uh, again, I didn't check outside the school with this. Now we're talking about uh, an event completely unrelated to the circumstances of this case. Okay. Your Honor, he's the one that brought it out. I didn't elicit that from him. He on his own, so I think I should be able to. And there wasn't an objection at that time, but that is more appropriate for the regular board dire. Um, tell me about the commentary you've made or haven't. Uh, let's focus on what you, if you haven't made anything, I'm not worried about that or concerned about that. But you have made commentary about some of the people involved in the protests, you're saying? Uh, probably. Tell it, me about those. Uh, just that. Um, People were coming in, getting people stirred up, trying to turn it into something that it's not. And the two well, people that I had problems with in my neighborhood were both white. Okay. Did you call the police on those people? Yes, I did. Did you follow them with a gun? Uh, the one person was sitting in front of my house in a car. I didn't listen to this. I, I understand, but we've got to keep this to the pre-trial yes, yes, publicity and yeah. hardship. Thank you. I'm going to move on to another subject. Okay. Still talking about your commentary on Facebook and other matters. Pretty much what I've already told you, that um, I'm predisp um, I've got an opinion on it, what my opinion is. Did you use any like inflammatory language or other inappropriate language when you've made reference to any of the individuals that have commented about this case? Uh, I don't normally. Have you I, in this particular case, sir? I couldn't say for sure. I've got um, some nieces, nephews on Facebook. I wouldn't want to, I don't usually put uh, anything I don't, I wouldn't want them to read. Is, your, is it your objective here to get on this case? Not really. So you'd rather not be here? Absolutely. Okay. How, did you, I gather you don't have this hardship? I could probably come up with something if I wanted to, but... Um, but you want, you want to serve? I want to do the right thing. If, okay. if, you, if you, you want to disqualify me for my donations or my opinion, then uh, you're, you're free to do that, but I'm not going to try to shirk my duty. Yes, sir. No, I'm just trying to ask what you're here because we... As you know, you've heard of the term, people want to get in to help one side or the other, and they might misstate stuff. Or oh, I'm, I'm sure. No, I'm not looking to write a book in a couple of months or anything okay. like that. You got your jury summons, right? Yes, sir. And did you do any research on the case once you got that? No. Have you followed any of the proceedings that have occurred throughout this time? I've, not I've at had all. a few people make comments to me. Tell me about that. Uh, my uh, neighbor asked my wife if I had... Uh, been questioned last week because she saw a person my age and my description and asked if, if I had uh, been on there. Oh, okay, I got it. So I because found out that it was me. not showing the photographs of the people, I see what you're saying. Right, she asked if it was me cause, and I didn't realize it was being televised. It's no, a, you understand they're not showing your picture? Correct. It's, it's a channel I don't get at home, so we didn't uh, know about it. Okay, other than that? No, if uh, someone asks me a question, I just tell them that um, I've just been basically sitting and waiting and uh, there's really nothing to tell. Okay. And, and maybe I wasn't clear in my question. I'm talking about prior to coming Monday, you know, in terms of when you came with the court and told you not to talk about the case. I'm talking about the time you got the subpoena. You follow me? Before you came to court, you didn't do any research at all? 
Uh, I've, I've pretty much had overload with this case, the Casey Anthony case, and uh, I doubt there's much out there that hasn't been on the 6 o'clock news. Okay. So have you ever gone on the Internet and looked up this case to see what's going on? No. And, and the reason I ask is having contributed to his fund, I would have thought you would have been curious as to what's going on just to see how he's doing or not, whether uh, your small donation in some way helped or not. You know, didn't uh, really it, have it was all reported on the news. Uh, they had his uh, website. Uh, they talked about how much he'd raised and so you how much he'd spent, and then there was another surge of donations. Did you, were, are you a frequent visitor to his website? Uh, I haven't been to that since the donation. Only in the beginning? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else that you know about the case that you would like to uh, tell us about? Um, that's pretty much all I've heard. I haven't looked for it, but uh, it's pretty much a daily news item. You, you have, I, I don't understand. I haven't looked for oh. anything. Uh, within the last two weeks or three weeks or last month, you haven't heard anything about the case? Um, just, you know, upcoming jury selection sure. and different motions and things like that. Tell me about the motions you've heard about. Uh, I don't remember specifics, just one side would make a motion and they'd accept it or not. Um, I wasn't really paying attention to it. Have you heard any, are you aware whether there are any recordings in this case? Um, as in? Any type of, I, I can't tell you, I can't feed you like information and say, oh, you're biased or whatever. No, um, I heard that there was the 911 tapes, the, uh, um, that there was some uh, controversy about uh, the background conversations. Tell me about those, what you remember hearing about that. That the, uh, there were some experts that uh, heard one thing and uh, some other experts that said it's, you really can't tell what it is or yeah. who's what, saying it. Did you, did you form an opinion as to that? Mm, not really. Uh, they, the uh, one set of experts say that uh, you can't really tell, and the other experts say, well, we use some other technology and we can. Right. Which, which do you believe one side or the other? From, from what I heard on the tape, it sounds uh, hard to decipher, but. So, so you, you, oh, I'm sorry, you've actually listened to the tape itself? What the news media's played. Oh, okay. That wasn't a trick question. I'm just saying, you, you, you're talking about the 911 recording where there's this, you've heard that tape itself. Where yeah, where the they, they, they have voices in the background sure. and they, they say, oh, that's George, no, that's Trayvon. Which side do you come under? I, I find it hard to believe, to tell which was which. So it might be, it might be Trayvon Martin, you believe, that was yelling for help? I would think that the person being uh, assaulted would be the person yelling for help. So you believe it's, it's who? I would believe it's George, but uh, I would have a hard time uh, deciphering a tape of that quality. So if you only heard from one expert in the case, let's assume, and that expert said it's Trayvon Martin yelling, you would automatically disbelieve him? I probably. I would, I would uh, object. Sustained. I would, uh, if he was the expert sir, in the case, I'd Sir, sir, when I sustain an objection, that means you can't answer that okay. question. So if you'll please wait for the next one. What else, have you heard any other recordings? That's, that's all I've, I'm aware of. Okay. What else have you seen? Uh, I think I may have asked you about photographs. Have you seen any photographs in this case? Yeah, they showed some photographs with Mr. Zimmerman with a broken nose and uh, some uh, blood on the back of his scalp. And upon seeing the photograph, you determined that he had a broken nose? I, it looked broken, and uh, I believe that they said the medical report or the paramedics or whoever reported it. So you've already concluded it, right? Uh, it seemed to be from a, a third un, uh, uninterested party. Okay. What else did you, uh, what other photographs have you seen? Uh, I think that's, that's most of it. Um, any other photographs at all regarding Trayvon Martin? Uh, there were some that were posted on the news, and then they said that it wasn't him, or I'm not sure. What, what, what did those photographs look like? Uh, I don't remember. 
Okay. There, there was a few on the news, and they said later that it was somebody else on uh, Facebook, that it wasn't him. Okay. The whole story, they say why somebody had posted or not? Uh, maybe it was someone with a similar name, or okay. maybe it was on his Facebook page, but it was with, of a friend. Okay, so you never heard an explanation. Okay. What else? Any other recordings that you've heard? I don't think so. Okay. Now, have you heard commentary about the case? Oh, not, sure. not, not, not at work. I'm talking about on the news media, like attorneys talking about the case. Um, I don't think so. Did you hear from any of the, the attorneys representing Mr. Zerman, Mr. O'Mara or Mr. West? Just anything that's been reported on the news channels. Okay. Have you heard any news conference that they had? Any? Um, no, I don't really go to the um, news channels with the, with the commentaries and he said, she said stuff. Okay. How do you feel about the commentaries that attorneys did comment about the case? Do you automatically believe them or disbelieve them? Uh, take it with a grain of salt. There's probably some truth, probably okay. some fabrication. Would you hold it against the state if we didn't comment about the case? Same thing. I, I take it with a grain of salt. That we haven't commented against? Do so you think we should have? Oh, I don't, I don't know if you have or not. No, assuming we have. You right. have it? To the assumption whether or not the state has made comments in the media. There's no so overruled. In other um, words, my question is if you only heard commentary from one side, could you keep be fair to the state if we have not commented about the case publicly? Yes, that you'd have to uh, listen to both sides in court to uh, get an honest opinion. Having contributed to Mrs. Zerman's defense fund, um, weren't you curious in terms of what his attorneys were saying about what was going on in the case? Excuse me? Having contributed to Mr. Zerman's defense fund, weren't you curious as to what his attorneys were doing on behalf of Mr. Zerman? Yes, well, that was, um, the defense fund was also, uh, from what I heard, for uh, living expenses, for uh, attorney fees, for, um, I heard, bodyguards. So it wasn't just a matter of uh, the defense, but uh, also just keeping your family afloat. Sure. And, and are you aware of how that money was spent? I heard it was spent for all those, I, I believe how, how all those things. That? How did you hear that? Uh, on the news when they were talking about how his funds were depleted and uh, he had expenses for different things. Okay. Did you read any books about the case? No. I didn't know there were any books about the case. Or any commentary at all, any news articles or any other stuff about the case? No, just, just news or newspaper and didn't really search for those, but if I saw an article, read it just for uh, the knowledge. I kept asking you about research, Mr. Zerman, did you do any research on Mr. Trayvon Martin? I wouldn't know where to look except for the news channels. Okay, I, I know if you just, you know, Googled it or whatever. Um, did you think at all of, of contributing to uh, the Martins family, the fact that they had lost a loved one. Uh, I hadn't heard of a fund for them. Uh, I know there were a lot of uh, memorials and things of that nature. They seem to um, have a, a large following and a lot of people to help them out. So you weren't concerned about that is what you're saying? They, they seem to have the family, their family covered. It was uh, Mr. Martin's, or um, uh, Mr. Zimmerman's family that yes, uh, didn't seem to be getting much sympathy or uh, marches support. So, so based, on, based on your opinion or what you heard from the media, you felt that it was biased against Mr. Zerman? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that to be true throughout all from the beginning till now? Pretty much from the beginning. Okay. Do you think that's still true today? Uh, mostly. Well, what recently have you heard that's still unfavorable to Mr. Zerman? Uh, he's still described as a man that shot an unarmed team. They don't um, rarely mention the uh, self-defense, or if they do, it's it's buried a few page, a few sentences later. And, and you believe that the media is being negligent because they're not reporting everything in terms of that it is self-defense. Correct. Right. Okay. Is there any other aspect of the case that you believe uh, the media is being unfair to Mrs. Zerman recently? Um, not recently. They, it seems to be fairly neutral recently. Do you know why all of a sudden, in your opinion, the media is more neutral? 
uh, pretty much all the facts are out. They pretty much run out of things, things to report. You mean that they've kind of, since the trial's getting close, they've all of a sudden now decided to be fair? Is that, I don't make, no, what do you mean not, by that? They're really not reporting on the case so much as jury selection and this is coming up and uh, so the motions, on. the it's motions moved. about the recordings, that sort of thing. Tell me, you mentioned the, the protests. How did you feel about that? I, I think it was uh, just to get people on the news and uh, it really wasn't uh, a racial issue that... Did you think the media was turning into a racial issue? Um, they probably contributed. Okay. Did you think anybody else, based on what you read in the, in the news, I gather you didn't go to these uh, rallies or protests, right? No. Okay. And uh, is there any reason why, since you contributed to, to the defense fund, you didn't go to the rally? Uh, it seemed to me that uh, Mr. Zimmerman was uh, uh, protect, uh, defending himself at the time, and it seemed justified. In other words, uh, I, I feel sympathy for the family that lost their son, but you felt he was in the wrong. Yes. Based on what you saw in the media. Based based you, based on what I've heard so far. And and you cut, you firm in that belief. I think you said seventy percent. Right. Correct. So what would the state have to prove to you in order to prove that he is guilty? Uh, that uh, Mr. Zimmerman uh, initiated the uh, confrontation. By doing what? Following him? I think you've already stated he followed him, but other Correct. than that. That, that doesn't... Uh, uh, I, I, I object um, Mr. Lederand is attempting to elicit specific facts. Okay. I'm going to sustain the objection. Uh, based, uh, uh, based on the media knowledge, is there anything else you want to bring to our attention about your commentary about this case or in, in the media or on Facebook related to the media? that you think we should know. And, and the reason I ask, I want to give you an opportunity because previously you hadn't told us about the, the fund. Is there anything else that you I, I, I brought up the fund. Oh, I, I apologize. On the questionnaire, you had not brought it up. I, I apologize. You, you did bring it up here. You're right. I'm talking about the questionnaire. Is there anything else that you think might be germane <coughs> for either side to know about your feelings about this case? Uh, I, I think I was honest uh, about my uh, opinion, and uh, that's the opinion I've shared with my friends that uh, it's, it's a shame that uh, a young man was killed, but I think Mr. Zimmerman was in self-defense. Okay. Have you looked at the law on self-defense in, in arriving, or is it just what the media portrayed? Uh, it's been printed in conjunction with this case and other cases, what the stand your ground law is and uh, so you, how it's applied. Right, so you relied on the media statement of what the law is to apply it to, to arrive at your conclusion. I've, I've read in, in right. other, not just the media, but in other, uh, from other sources as far as stand your ground. What other sources? I don't know, if the state website maybe, I'm not sure. Maybe. Okay, so you did your own research once you were uh, a stand your ground too? Back when it was first passed, I wanted to see the background on it. Okay, I apologize. Not, so not right. in conjunction with this case, but be beforehand. So you had already a working knowledge? Yes. Okay. Um, did your opinion ever change, or has it been pretty firm that he's an innocent man? From the beginning to now, you had that belief, right? You've never vacillated on it. Pretty much. I've been, been looking to see the developments and, and you know, how, how it goes. But still, everything you, based on everything, the knowledge you have, you were firm believe that he's innocent. So far, yes. Okay. And did you say you did only you watch CNN uh, related to this case, correct? I've watched it. They probably had uh, news coverage on it. I don't recall specifics. Uh, how about Fox? Uh, I occasionally watch that, but it's it's easier just to find CNN or headline news. Okay. Did you want? Did you um, have you listened to anything on Fox related to this case? Uh, on TV? Yes, sir. I apologize. Fox TV. I don't recall if they were reporting on this or not. I'm not a regular watcher of that channel. Okay. Any of the news or any of the people that have their own shows, nothing related to this case? Uh, I, I occasionally watch um, 
Sean Hannity or some of those shows, sure. but uh, it's rare. I'm going through the channels. I'll watch to see what's on, and I'm not a regular watcher or anything. Did you watch anything on Sean Hannity related to this case? No, I don't think he's covered it, as far as I know. And you stated you, you do believe everything on the media, or you don't? I, I take it with a grain of salt. I guess that still comes back, and I apologize, and hopefully I'm not repeating myself, but if you take it with a grain of salt, then how did you arrive at the decision to uh, send money to Mr. Zerman's fund? That's the 30% uh, the of uh, my opinion that's un unsure. So that's why you contributed to this fund, because you 30% is unsure? Uh, the 70% uh, made me donate to his fund. The 30% says I need to hear both sides of the story before I make up my mind. But you're, you're more than 50-50, right? Sure. In the discussions you had with your friends, did you say some of them took the position that he was guilty? Sure. And, and were those people at, at friends or family? Uh, co-workers. Okay. How many of the co-workers? Don't, don't name who they are or anything. How many of them? Uh, what percentage, I guess what I'm trying to ask, the people you had discussions with? Uh, how my, many? A, a smaller percentage of people. Like 5%, 10%? 10%, 15%. Okay. okay. And, it, and, and when they argued his guilt to you, did any one of them ever make a point that you thought, well, that's a valid point? Sure. Tell me one of those points. Uh, that uh, by following the kid that he might have um, caused the um, confrontation. So the kid, kid might have felt threatened, and um, that, that's what caused the confrontation, which uh, led up to the... Uh, the shooting. So in other words, that Mr. Zimmerman followed him and it caused the confrontation? That's their belief. Right. And did you just summarily dismiss it or did you give it any weight? I don't think that uh, just because you think you're being followed gives you the right to assault someone. I'm sorry. Just because you're saying and as if you don't believe that it's true that Mr. Zimmerman was following him, that, that gives Mr. Martin the right to assault him because you concluded that Mr. Martin assaulted him. I believe that uh, that, they, that uh, he has a right to uh, follow a person without being attacked. I, I know. I'm saying, based on your knowledge of the media and what other people have told you, you've come to the conclusion that Mr. Martin attacked Trayvon Martin attacked Mr. Zerman. That is what what's been reported so far. Okay. And, and you, you, that is your belief. Why you have the 70 percent? Correct. All right. Um, Anything else that you would want to enlighten us about uh, this case that you have knowledge of? This is our only opportunity to ask you these questions. <laughs> and, you know, there's no other jurors you understand in terms of what you know about the case. Because I'm just trying to find out what else you know about the case or what you've heard or what other comments you may have made on the case on, on Facebook or anything about it. Uh, I think any comments I made are consistent with what I've, what I've told you. And um, I can't really think of anything that would be relevant Okay. At this time. How about commentary about any of the people that have commented about his innocence or that uh, in terms of his innocence or the fact that he's guilty? Uh, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Uh, <laughs> I might not be fond of their opinion, but uh, that's their right. The, the officials that you mentioned, um, did you mention the names of people that are involved in the protests or rallies yes. or whatever? I think you mentioned, did you say Jesse Jackson and Sean Hannity? Anybody um, else that you think from? Uh, Al Sharpton. Al, I'm sorry. Al Sharpton. What did I say? I said Sean, Sean Hannity. I, I should have said Sean Hannity. I apologize. Uh, anybody else? No, that, that was it. Okay. Was there anybody of a national statute that you felt made inappropriate comments related to this case that you may have commented about? Not that I can think of. Okay. Um, I, th I think we did mention that uh, uh, President Obama made a comment about um, Trayvon. Sure. But uh, he, he tends not to uh, mention uh, our heroes overseas or Medal of Honor winners kind of get bypassed, but uh, he, he likes to comment on local issues like uh, Mr. Martin or uh, 
other celebrities and sure. bypass the uh, people that should be mentioned. Yes, sir. And I appreciate your comments about people serving overseas in our country, but aside from that, you felt Mr. Obama's comments were inappropriate? Uh, he was taking a side in the case when uh, it still hadn't been decided yet. Isn't that true of yourself? I'm not, uh, don't have a national platform to uh, spread my opinion. So you're critical of, of the fact that he does it because he has a national platform? Well, he, he's in a leadership position and people are going to put weight on his opinion. And I gather if, um, I'll strike that. Glad we have a moment on it. Um, you recall, by the way, that you did make a comment regarding a, uh, on Facebook regarding a, um, Spike Lee? About who? Spike Lee? Uh, I don't recall if I made a comment. I think he's, he's weighed in on it. Right. And wouldn't you have Facebook have made a comment about it? Uh, and I'm not, related to this case, not just Spike Lee in general. Yeah, that's not normally someone I'd, uh, make comments to or about, but uh, he might have made a comment on somewhere I was looking. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. Mr. West? Thank you. Afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Don West. I'm an attorney along with Marco Mera for George Zimmerman that you see over here. And Robert Hirschhorn is in the middle helping us out. Thanks for your patience here today. I'll try to be brief. It seems as though uh, your questioning by Mr. Deloriano pretty extensively explored your knowledge of the case from the media. Yes, sir. So I would try not to dwell on that very much, unless there's something offhand that you think of as we talk that you want to, to offer. There's really, this part of the proceeding, as you know, is sorting out what people have heard. There's other questions that would be asked later on about other things. So I'll also limit my questions to what you've heard. And then the other part of it, maybe um, the most important part, is how has that affected you and whether or not any opinions that you hold um, could be set aside and that you could make your decision in the case based solely on the evidence that you hear from the courtroom. In other words, while we can't erase people's memories, people can judge for themselves whether they think they can set information aside and limit their decision based only on evidence in the courtroom. That's what I'm getting at here. Yes, sir. Uh, just to clarify a couple of things, are, are you saying that based upon your exposure to the case in the media, um, it's your, your sense of it based on that information that it's more likely that George Zimmerman Objection is the leading question. That it's more likely that George Zimmerman is innocent. That's correct. I think you also said that you're a bit skeptical sometimes of the media and you take everything with a grain of salt? Yes, sir. Would that be regardless of whose side they happen to be on at the moment? Yes, sir. Is it possible in your mind that you've formed an impression or an opinion um, based upon what you've read in the media or heard that isn't accurate? Absolutely. And are you open to the possibility that maybe some of the information you've heard that you think is favorable to George Zimmerman isn't completely accurate? That's possible as well. And if you hear that kind of information in the courtroom, would you be able to make your decision based just on that? Yes, sir. Is there, uh, any aspect 
Well, first of all, let me say, not everything in this case is contested. It's not contested, for example, that the event occurred on February 26, 2012. It's not contested that George Zimmerman shot Trayvon Martin. Um, it's not contested that George Zimmerman claims the shooting was in self-defense. Is there anything that you've heard in the case that gives you such a strong opinion or belief that you couldn't set aside if you heard evidence that was different in the trial? No, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that uh, I haven't heard everything in the case. If the prosecution, if uh, Mr. Delariande and his uh, uh, co-counsel were, through competent evidence in the courtroom, able to prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt that George Zimmerman committed the crime of murder, would you find George Zimmerman guilty? If they provided evidence uh, contrary to what I've heard, yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's their burden of proof. If they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he committed the crime of murder, would you convict him? Yes, sir. May I have just a moment? I'm going to bounce around just a little bit um, to help save some time and also not to cover ground that's already been covered. Uh, do you work in a location where you're able to converse throughout the day with coworkers? Yes, sir. This has been, this case has been a bit of an ongoing conversation at work? On and off, as, as news bits come out, people comment uh, during break comment, uh, good or bad, have a discussion. Uh -huh. So maybe you might see something on the news or maybe somebody else would see something on the news and say, hey, did you hear about that? Correct, and someone, some, some people like to uh, just take the opposite opinion just to keep a uh, lively conversation going. I see, so sometimes it's a lively debate Yes. for the purpose of debate. Correct, there's a diverse crowd, people from uh, up north, people from the Midwest, so you've got a lot of different uh, personalities, people from different areas might see things differently, so it uh, makes for some lively conversation. Are there some people that you work with that are fairly new in town? Yes, some. And some that have been here all their lives? Yes, sir. In that regard, um, there, there's a certain part of the work group that you talk with regularly that is pretty firmly convinced that Mr. Zimmerman is guilty? Uh, a few people, yes. Mm -hmm. And do they engage in the lively debate too? Uh, sometimes a little too lively, <laughs> but yes. Okay, and then I take it there are others that, that take the opposite position um, and there's that conversation. Yes, sir. Because the case is uh, current in the news, the, the actual subject of the discussion might be related to what's going on in any given moment as opposed to the same thing over and over. Excuse me, I'm not sure. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> um, as opposed to every day just debating the same thing, um, as the news reports different things, does the subject related to the case that's being discussed change? Yes, uh, if a 
the subject is the recordings. People say, oh yeah, I heard that. You can't really tell who's, who's saying, who's saying what. Mm -hmm. And oh, well, the expert says this. And as, as new topics related to the case pop up, there'll be a discussion. I see. So it's sort of a current events discussion. Pretty much. They don't re really rehash it so much as if uh -huh. something is new on the news, it'll be discussed. Does the conversation include other events going on in the world? Oh, sure. So it's just the way you guys... Um, uh, the, the topic of the day. You did mention that at one point you had uh, given a $20 donation. Yes, sir. A couple of things about that. Um, it was... I didn't hear exactly what you said. I got the, incent, uh, the sense that it was quite a while ago. It was shortly after the uh, defense fund and the website, I guess, were started. It was mentioned on the news that he had started a website and that uh, they were looking for donations. Mm -hmm. well, your donation was uh, $20? Yes, sir. Is this not, I hope it's not too personal, but is $20 uh, a lot of money to you? Uh, it's not a lot, but I don't really have a lot to spare either. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you have some sort of financial stake in the case somehow? Not at all. Because you um, gave a donation some, some time ago, um, do you feel that regardless of the evidence that might uh, the $20 was in support of George Zimmerman, obviously. Do you feel that um, as evidence were to come out, especially at the trial, that, w that caused you to change your mind about the evidence or um, about how you viewed the case, the fact that you gave money, would that make any difference to you? I'd like to think that I uh, donated to a good cause, but uh, if I didn't, it's not enough that um, I'm going to be real upset about it either. I know that um, this case has received a, a lot of attention because it's somewhat divisive. Is that fair? Uh, it's been made divisive, yes. Mm -hmm. Does the division in the case or um, what you know about the case um, in any way, would that prevent you from deciding the case based just on the evidence? from the court. I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, let me ask it this way. Um, do you believe in the presumption of innocence? Yes. Sir. Do you believe that someone has the right to a fair trial? Absolutely. And do you believe that under the law... Do you believe that you can give George Zimmerman a fair trial? I'd like to think I could be fair. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll remain seated for just a moment, and counsel, when you're ready, um, please approach.
Thank you, Dr. Phil. De follow Deputy Jarvis out into the um, outside. Thank you very much. Um, can we bring in our next juror? Please be seated. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're going to continue to refer to you as Juror H29, and the attorneys are going to have an opportunity to ask you questions about the questionnaire you filled out on Tuesday morning, and we're going to begin with Mr. De La Ronda. You may proceed. Good afternoon, sir. <sighs> Good afternoon. Um, you just sit back and relax. We're going to ask you some questions, obviously, regarding what your knowledge is in this case. And uh, what we're trying to strive is what knowledge you bring in, just to get an idea of whether that would interfere with you being able to be an objective juror in this case. I, I, I've read your questionnaire. It's very brief, right to the point. Mm -hmm. And you stated that you had uh, gathered or heard about the case from news media only. Yes, sir. Okay. And then you stated also whether you had formed an opinion. You stated no, you had not. Correct. And would that still be accurate? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so let's talk about what news media you may have gotten some information about. Uh, do you remember it was TV or the newspaper or Internet, combination? Uh, combination, but Channel 2, I recall. Okay. Um, so it would have been and, and I, sure. general, and, the general news. And what I'm trying to gather from you is as best you can remember. So if you don't remember something, it's perfectly all right to say this is all I know. But I'm going to prod your, your, your pride, pride, pride into your mind a little bit in terms of trying to get, because what we're concerned about both sides is, you know, that you'll sit as a juror and you'll remember something else later. And in fairness to both sides, we just want to know what you know. Very good. If that makes sense. Uh, let's talk about the local aspect first. You think on Channel 2 you would have heard something? Yes. Okay. Would that have been uh, recently or closer in time to when it happened? And it happened back in February of last year. No, it would have been closer in time to when it happened. Okay. Are you one of those individuals that watches the news regularly in the morning or in the afternoon? Or no, sir. Periodically or? Do not. Okay. Um, as best you can recall, tell us when you first heard about the case what you actually heard. Uh, that there had been a shooting in the Sanford area. Okay. And... Um, the sad event of the okay. evening. Sure. Um, and I gather after that time you heard more about the case or not? Yes, sir. Tell us if you could what, what you heard then. Um, well, in, in recollection, other than seeing pictures on TV okay. of what had happened, um, we had a little circus come to town with celebrities. Okay. And uh, that quite honestly, turned me off sure. for watching the case for, for the duration. So you kind of just took yes. it out of your mind or took it off? You couldn't take it off the screen, I gather, but you just didn't pay attention when it came on? You can't because it's everywhere. Okay. All right. So I'm going to kind of okay. prod you a little bit on that, too. Let's talk about, so all you remember at the beginning is just shooting in sand for no specifics about the case at all? No, sir. Other than, no. No. no, other than he was, I mean, he was shot. Why? How? Uh, I couldn't, couldn't be specific at the time. Do you time. remember anything about the circumstances of surrounding how the shooting occurred? Uh, Not just at the beginning, but even later on throughout. In terms of just well, the circumstances were that uh, he was involved with the Homeowners Association Watch Program. Okay. And, um, and, and was, was challenging somebody. And, okay. And from there, the events went south. Okay. Um, you mentioned um, photographs. Tell me if you can, what you recall about any photographs related to this case. I remember the photographs of uh, Mr. Zimmerman's back of his head. 
Okay. Um, and, and they're splashed everywhere. I mean, okay. I, I'm on the internet uh, as part of my job every day, so sure. you couldn't even get away from it. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, any other photographs that you recall about the case? Any other aspect of the case? Trayvon's picture. Okay. Both when he was young and both when he was older. Okay. Um, any other photographs? No, sir. No. The photographs of the back of Mr. Zimmerman's head, what were your impressions regarding that? Well, they, they look damaging. Sure. Okay. Did you make any other conclusions other than that? No, sir. Okay. How about the photographs of uh, Trayvon Martin, anything related to that? No, because they were stills. Uh, that's all I ever saw was still pictures of him. Okay. All right. Did you watch any kind of video, and I'm not saying that there is, any video that, about this case? No, sir. Okay. How about any recordings of any type about this case? No. No. I, I really... Took it off? I mean, it became a circus. Okay. Um, you referred to it as a circus. Why? It was being judged in the media. Okay. The media is always right. Okay. Right. So I gather you said that in a sarcastic tone. Yes, sir. Okay. Very well, sarcastic. I want to make sure, for the record, I can tell by your facial expression, but I want to make sure. So I gather you're one of those individuals that does not believe everything they read or see. Oh God, no. Okay. Um, did you feel that the media was biased one way or the other, either in favor of Trayvon Martin or in favor of George Zimmerman no. at the beginning and throughout the case, or did you see any? Depends on who you watch what day. Okay. Meaning whether it's... One day one way, one day the next. I mean, it was back and forth. And it was, it was a seesaw. So, uh, you know, this is a tragic case. Yes, sir. No, there, are, there are no winners here. Okay. Um, you mentioned internet. Did you do, I guess it's part of your job, and we're on purpose not getting you to identify where you work, but we've got here on the question here. Mm -hmm. But uh, you deal with uh, use of the internet? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you stated, I think, just by doing your regular job that you would come across periodically a story about this case? Yes. Uh, when you did come across a story related to this case, did you just look at the headline, or did you actually read the case itself? Uh, just the headline. Okay. It does form any pr impression on you in terms of just the headlines by themselves? No. Okay. Um, how about any of the court proceedings themselves? Did you ever watch any of those? Or? No, sir. Well, okay. there was a... Yeah, I caught the media case when he did go to jail of uh, what was going on uh, with the he judge. You Mr. Zimmerman? Mr. Zimmerman, okay. correct. Do you recall when that was about? Or? Oh, my God, it was about okay. months, months after the... Okay. Anything else other than that regarding court proceedings? Or? No. Okay. Um, and I gather you have not done your own research in this case? No, sir. Okay. You got the summons for jury duty three, four weeks ago, maybe five weeks ago now, mm -hmm. did you do any, like, oh, let me find out what kind of cases are going on so I have knowledge of what the heck's going on in the community? No, I didn't, but my coworkers and people did remind me of the date, and yes, they told me. Okay, did they tell you that you were a possible juror for this case? Yes. Okay, did they, other than that, did they tell you anything related to this case? No. How about at the beginning, when this first happened in, from February of last year till now, uh, if, there, if there has been commentary about the case, have any of the co-workers have you had discussions with them about the case? There's always been tidbit conversations around, but I, I got to tell you, most of the people that I'm around were more upset with the, the events of, of all the publicity for the city of Sanford. Okay. They thought it was a negative. It, it was negative on the city. Sure. It still is. Um, having those feelings, do you think that would have any impact in you being able to be objective to both Mr. Zerman and to the state of Florida? No, sir. In no. other words, would you hold it against, well, let me backtrack a second. In terms of the stuff that was going on in the city aside from the case, who did you attribute that to or, or did you attribute that to anybody or any cause? Uh, let me, let me Mr. rephrase it. My, yeah. my question is, there was stuff going on in the city, Correct. I gather, aside from the case itself. Right. You mentioned a circus from the media and other. Mm -hmm. 
I would not judge the case in the media, so okay. I, can't, I can't do that. Uh, so if you're asking me, do I have an opinion one way or the other, not knowing the facts of this case, no. Okay. I, I was being honorably asking you a question. Let me backtrack a second. Maybe I misunderstood what you said. When you said the circus, are you talking about just the media tweeting it as a national event, or did you mean uh, there was something aside from the case itself? No, the media. You know, the media okay. tweaking it. And you said that the city of Sanford was put in a bad light. What do you mean by that? Well, the people that came down judged this case not on its merit, not what happened, um, and they presented that very vocally to the area, and, and, and in my opinion, shouldn't have been done that way. Okay. I mean, it stirred up everybody. You, you said this is somebody, and are you talking about prominent people yes. that are on TV and stuff, and yes. two of them would be reverends, or? Yes. Okay. Um, you're talking about Reverend Jackson, Reverend yes. uh, Sharp, is that correct? Correct. And you felt that they were creating something when there really wasn't, in that sense, that issue? Yes, sir. Okay. Would that, did you feel that they were in favor of one side versus the other? Oh, obvious. And were they in favor of Trayvon Martin? Yes. Okay. Yes. Would you hold that against the state of Florida since we're prosecuting Mr. Zimmerman? No. Did you feel we were in any way connected to that? No. Okay. Would you hold that against Mr. Zimmerman, the fact that, that no. those individuals were out there? Uh, the, some people's take on is that, that those people are just instigators or whatever. Some people say that they have a right to free speech, you know, they were civil in their discourse, but they'd rather not have them. What do you fall in, in, in one of those doers or another category that you would fall in describing what occurred? I would fall in the evidence of the case to know what happened. I mean, unfortunately, we don't have a Mac cam here to, okay. to describe this uh, and, and what happened, and one day technology may have that for, uh, for everything. Uh, so being that uh, we don't have that issue, I can't express one way or the other. All right. There was also, um, and maybe it's what you mentioned in terms of being sarcastic about the media, that sometimes in addition just to straight, what else going on is just straight news, now they have commentary about the news. Is that what you mean too in terms of the circus atmosphere? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you listen, uh, even at the beginning stages, to any commentators commenting about the case? I couldn't tell you who, but okay. yes, I mean, they, All right. one in one ear and out the other. That was my next question. It didn't sway you one no. way or the other? No. Um, do you recall any of the, uh, if there were any local commentators or attorneys talking about the case? Um, nothing that would be significant to me. Here's the question I think I can speak for both sides is that if you're a juror, we ask you to sit there and make a determination only on what happens in the courtroom and you stay in and you can. You, you've got your objective, you haven't made up your mind, and you can listen to both sides. And at this time, you have not determined whether Mr. Zimmerman is guilty or whether he's innocent. Is that correct? Correct. So the question is, you're sitting as a juror, you listen to the evidence, and you know, you're being objective, you're just relying on the evidence, but all of a sudden as you're listening to a witness say something, you remember that there was a story about that and it pops in your head. You know, and the question is, what do you do with that? You know, it's in your, it's in your brain, it's sitting there, and can you use that at all? Or do you just kind of have to like exclude it and not have it factor in in your decision? I'd have to exclude it. So. Okay. Is there any doubt that you can do that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, you mentioned people at work. How about my like, family? Did you ever have discussions with family about this case? Yeah, my mom called me from California. Okay. Said, what did you tell on? her? <laughs> I said, what's going on in Sanford? <laughs> what did you tell her? No, I, I, uh, I've got an 83-year-old mother that's very sp sparky. So uh, um, she was wondering what in the world is going on. And of course, she knows that I'm involved in this now, but I've also told her now that I can't talk to her. <laughs> oh, she recently talked to yeah. her? Oh, okay. Yes, she knows how to launch NASA by texting, so. Gotcha. Okay. Um, is it fair to assume that you have not commented on the internet about this case at all? I have not. Uh, and I apologize if you already covered this, but did you watch any of this on national news, even at the beginning stages? 
I'm sure it crossed them in the beginning. Do you recall what station you would have watched it on? No, sir. And you favor one station over the other or another? No. Okay. No. Um, have you visited any like legal websites dedicated to one side or the other just to get informed about the case? No. Okay. Um, we realize that when people are asked to serve as jurors, it's a hardship on, on anybody that's asked as a citizen of this great country to come and sit as jurors. But we, uh, I think uh, we all acknowledge that it's a hardship, but we ask people to do that, and we realize it's an inconvenience. Um, so my question is as follows, and I know you kind of answered this already, but I want to make sure it's crystal clear. Uh, both sides have tried to come up with an estimate of how long, once we get a jury, and we're still in the process, of, we're in week two of trying to pick a jury. Uh, so once we get a jury, we believe it will take anywhere from two to four weeks. And we realize, you know, nobody's like, okay, I'm signing up for that. But as we've talked about, that's the only way that really our system works is to ask people to sacrifice. The question is, and also the court has made a determination that the jury will be sequestered so that there's no influence from outside force from the media trying to contact a juror, uh, et cetera. The question is whether that would be an insurmountable hardship. We know it's a hardship. The question is whether it would be an insurmountable hardship. It could be, sir. It could be for me. Tell me a little bit about why, why that is. Well, I mean, we're in a recovering market, and, and we are, obviously we're... you know what I do, so. Yes, sir. Um, um, it, it, it could very conceivably do, but I also know that you know this is uh, the selfish part is to say no. That I, I, I wouldn't want to serve, uh, but I'll let you gentlemen make that determination. So even though it would be a hardship, as you stated, it would not yes. be the, the thing that you would ideally want to do. Or, Absolutely not. But you realize that you might have to make the sacrifice, and you'd be willing to do it. I would be, but. Uh, okay. You could make me a happy man too. So. Okay, I understand. Yeah, and and listen, we we all realize that everybody from the court to all the parties realize that it's an inconvenience for for everybody, uh, including all the parties. You know, that's, that's part of the process. May I have a moment, Your Honor? Yes, Has anybody close to you at all expressed an opinion? I know your grand. I mean, I'm sorry, your mother called you, but she was. I've heard scattered opinions, yes, sir, and and I, I really, and I've I've heard them from both sides of the coin. So, okay. um, and the, those people know that I have no opinion too. Sure. Okay. Um, were you ever leaning one way or the other, or is it where you, are you just one of those individuals that just kind of tries to keep an open mind as you're going, realizing that? No, I've got more experience than that. I mean, I might have been that way younger. But, okay. You know, we're getting older now, so. Yes, sir. I can. Yeah. Relate to that. Um, you mentioned the, the bringing the circus to town, and here's my question about that. Would any circus, would any aspect about being a circus um, affect how you approach or deliberate and, and how you arrive at decisions? No, sir. No. I mean, this is not an easy decision regardless of how this goes. Um, but um, I would not be one to, to shun. Um, okay. My, my, you know, the, the bottom line is if there was no evidence presented about that, you know, that there was uh, rallies, protests, whatever you want to call it, you understand that's totally irrelevant. You can completely put that in a separate category and it won't impact it all, one way or the other. I could. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. As mentioned uh, in the initial question by Mr. Delayon, that this really is to try and find out what you know about the case, um, whatever it might be, because we don't want jurors who just know nothing about it and sit under rocks or something like that. We'd much rather have people who are at least engaged. But to the extent that you are engaged in this sort of flow of information, that we know what it is. And because um, in that way, once we get it on the table, it's going to be a lot easier to figure out how to tell you to set it aside. It sounds like you have had some experience um, or some exposure to the information, but not a lot. Is that sort of an overview? Correct. Okay. And um, you were asked of where it came from, and I guess it's just generally the media information that you've seen come across. You're, in, you're on the internet because of your work sometimes, correct? Correct. And you see it sometimes on the news? Correct. You haven't sought out any particular information about the case? No, sir. 
And to the extent that you've had some particular information that you remember, you talked about seeing some photos, at least one of George Zimmerman. Correct. And could you describe that for me? It was the back of his head where it was bloodied. Okay. Do you recall what context you saw that? Picture. Just, just a flat picture on TV. Any news reporting that went along with it? None that I would recall or have paid attention to. Okay. Did that give you such a, a feeling or a connection to George Zimmerman that it would overpower your being able to look at the evidence here um, from the witness stand? I would hope not. Okay. Similarly, you said you had some questions of some photos that you saw about Trayvon Martin. Can yes. you describe those? Uh, when he was a young man and then also in his, um, his real still. Um, being older, because I mean, the first pictures that came out showed him as a real young, young gentleman. Did that give you any pause for concern? Why pictures of him as a younger child were being put out? Well, initially, I thought that was the young man that got killed. The twelve-year-old. Yes. And did that cause you any additional concern? For example, against George Zimmerman because that was the child you thought was in the altercation with him. I just didn't understand it, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay. And when you saw the more um, up-to-date photographs of Trayvon Martin, made, tell me about those. Well, it made more sense for what had happened to him. And what, what do you mean it made more sense? What, the, what I saw in the picture of his head. Okay. Did it cause you concern against, for example, the state or the Martin family that the earlier pictures were put out and then you found out that there were more accurate or, or older photographs existing? Well, now it became more true to what had actually happened, but it, again, I'm not going to say that I understand what totally happened that night, because okay. I still don't. The, um, the main purpose, again, and what the judge will instruct you is that whatever your memories are, faded or inaccurate, coming from the media as they might be, those that will be left outside the courtroom. Can you do that? Yes, sir. Can you further agree then to only um, decide the case on the facts that you get from the witness stand or that you see in evidence? Yes, sir. Any concern with being able to set aside those predispositions you might have about the case? Yes, sir. And um, you mentioned again, as many people who sat in that chair, that you understand it is quite an imposition if we ask you to stay with us the next two, maybe as many as four weeks, but that's something that though it would affect your life and your business that you would be able to survive it? Yes. Okay. I appreciate your time. If I might have one moment, Your Honor. Any further questions? Appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. If you'll stay seated for just a moment, counsel, when you're ready approach. Deputy Jarvis out of the courtroom. Thank you. Yes.
Please be seated. Good afternoon. Um, you're going to continue to be referred to as juror H31, and the attorneys are going to ask you questions about the questionnaire that you filled out on Tuesday morning, and we're going to begin with Mr. De La Ronda. You may proceed. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, as Judge Nelson stated, we're going to refer to you as uh, H31, and we're just asking you questions about uh, your knowledge of the case in terms of publicity. Okay. This is like part of the jury selection, but we're just focusing only at this time about what you've heard about the case. Yes, sir. Okay? And you've mentioned uh, in your questionnaire that we had a chance to read mm -hmm. that uh, you were aware of what happened since day one due to the incident occurring uh, near where you you have some interaction nearby. Correct. Leave it at that. I'm, without mm -hmm. referencing what. But you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Okay. And... Um, You've heard about it on the news, online, and in the newspaper, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, tell me if you can what you've, you've heard from the beginning of the case. What facts do you know about the case? Well, I listen to the news, um, look online, and different versions of it. Sure. Um, from one end, from the Trayvon end, from the Zimmerman end, and so I you, really... You're, looking at, you're listening to both sides? Both sides. Okay. Um, your exposure was that on local TV and national yes. TV? Mm -hmm. The local TV, you remember what channel? Uh, 13. Okay, how about national? Very rare, I watch national TV. Okay, and on the internet, did you do some research on it or did you look it up through Facebook? YouTube? On Facebook, there were a couple of friends of mine and I do have a couple of them that do have Trayvon's picture as their profile picture. Okay. Um, that they have they, their side of their comments. Gotcha. But, that didn't sway you one way or the other, no. is that correct? Okay. Um, the, and you had friends who have, I guess, in support of Trayvon Martin? Correct. Okay. How about, um, do you know people who are in support of George Zimmerman? No. Okay. Uh, even though the friends you have that are in support of George, I mean, of uh, Trayvon Martin didn't convince you to be in favor of uh, Trayvon Martin? No, because we don't, we don't have that type of looking at things. They have their own opinion, they express it, and that's it. And you have your own opinion. Correct. Right. Uh, sometimes the opinions clash, sometimes the opinions are, no. you don't have an opinion, and sometimes mm -hmm. you just agree. It's right? not a topic that we can bring up okay. to speak about in any way or any matter. Okay. We see it on the news, we watch it, it goes on to the next gotcha. thing, that's it. We're All done. Right. Um, I was covering what you had, what do you, what do you recall about the case in terms of what happened? you remember what happened? based on what you knew from TV? Well, from what I heard on the TV and precisely that day, I was also visiting um, a friend that lives in the complex next to where the incident okay, happened. Okay. So um, in the morning before I was transporting that way, they did tell me, well, you may have a little bit of traffic because something happened. Um, then I heard it on the news of what had transpired. Sure. And I was like, that's kind of odd because that neighborhood isn't, we've you. never heard anything of that at all. Sure. I used to live in the neighborhood. But that was about it. Okay. So you were visiting somebody not in that uh, retreat at Twin Lakes, but it's somewhere the next nearby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, did that person that you were visiting later tell you that they had more information about the case? No. Okay. Uh, in terms of specifics about what happened, mm -hmm. do, you, do you remember on TV how or what they said happened? Well, from what I recall, um, it was I guess Trayvon was going walking to the to back to the complex okay. and then something transpired and then there were gunshots and but i don't really pay too much detailed attention to it because like i said it's something that did happen you know too bad it was in a very good community whatever happened happened but it's not anything that i'll be like okay i'm gonna lose sleep over right. now um did you at any time come across any pictures related to the case in which you remember any, seeing any pictures that have anything to do with the case? In and any, I, I, see, I, what's difficult in asking you these questions, I can't tell you, oh, did you see a picture of A, B, or, you know, I can't tell you what the Well, in the are. newspapers, okay. when well, we saw, what, like, the newspapers, and then you right. can see it, like, on, on the internet. Sure. What, 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 did the, what do you recall the pictures being of? Well, I remember they took pictures of the complex, I okay. believe it was. Um, then the hoodie picture. Okay. from Trayvon, and then um, pictures of George. What do you remember the pictures of Mr. Zimmerman to be like? Just, you know, pictures like going into the courthouse. Okay. And like you see a lot of flashes of sure. people taking pictures sure. of him. Okay. 
Any other pictures that you can remember related to this case at all? Those are the ones I really pretty much okay. recall. All right. How about uh, you remember any, uh, were there any kind of videos at all related to this case? I'm not, not that I've word. seen online, okay. no. How about any kind of recordings of any type related to this case? The ones that have been on TV. Okay. What do you recall those recordings being? Uh, well, when they're, when they're giving, the, the options are like, you know, we're going to listen to this call um, of what happened, or the 911 incident. Okay. And, but that's about it. Okay. Did you form any opinions about that one way or the other? Very one? neutral. Okay. So you've been pretty neutral down there? Yes. The okay. And is that on purpose, just your nature in general? Or yeah, you, that's okay. pretty much how I am. I wasn't trying to apply it in one way or the okay. other. So you're not one to make snap decisions one way or the other? Correct. Okay. Um, regarding the, the, the calls, do you remember what they were of in terms of when you say the 911 call, do you remember what the 911 was call was about? Well, when they would open, um, like for example, I would be flipping to the channels and I would always look to or towards the news because of the weather. Sure. Um, and they would have anything, well, you know, the latest update on the George Zimmerman whatever trial, um, you know, new evidence, and I, I can either be listening to it or it could be in the background while I'm doing something. Sure. But never to be, like, very detailed to li listen into it. So you didn't I would hear the normal thing that they would say, like, someone was either crying or someone was either saying this or okay. I was like, okay. You didn't form an opinion one way or the other no. from what you heard? It's really, it's really, it's, you know, I can have my own opinion, and everybody's been saying one thing, you know, a lot of people can have their own opinion. That's normal. But it's not, like I said, it's not anything that will make me lose sleep because it's not anything that okay. well, I can when you do. Say, when you say you have your own opinion, have you formed an opinion in this case? Not really. Okay, okay. Um, because you mentioned on here that you had not formed an opinion. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? Is that correct? That's and I know you're saying yes when you say uh huh or you say no. say no. I'm trying to get it. We got to get a yes or no just for purposes I of understand. the record. That makes sense. Yes. Um, how about discussions that, other than the friends you mentioned? Any other discussions with family, other friends that have told you about the case? No. Okay. Um, Any court proceedings of what's happening in court? Do you remember seeing any of that stuff? Whatever is transmitted on TV. Okay. Anything come to mind about any of the court proceedings, any of the really. hearings at all, or nothing? Okay. That's a no for the record. I no. Think. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, sometimes there's news where they tell you, you know, car hit another car, and they tell you, well, the car hit another car, but this is what really happened, and there's people commenting about mm -hmm. it. You understand what I'm saying? There's like lawyers or other people commenting. Yes. Have you heard any of that commentary? Not really. About the case. Do I really you know? haven't paid, paid too much attention to it, to be honest. Okay. How about even online? Have you come across <laughs> any commentary by people talking about what this really means or what this does? Or, you know, so called legal experts talking about what the facts Legally, are? Legally, no. Um, like I had advice previously through Facebook, some may have had an opinion or oh, what a shame this or whatever. Over and done with. Move on. Okay. All right. So you don't. You I don't. don't I haven't really no because I have a very busy life, and I try to disconnect from electronics as much as I could, because I have two small children that I try to focus more on them, sure. and working because I'm a single mom. Gotcha. So for me to constantly be like stuck on the TV or something, I I really don't. To be honest, I really don't have time okay. for it. All right. Um, I gather you don't tweet about this case. I don't have you, Twitter. You don't have Twitter. How no. about Facebook? Have you made comments? I only have Facebook. Did you make Face any comments about the case at all? I don't remember. You are more than happy to go ahead and look at my account. No, no. <laughs> I'm just saying, but but um, in terms of just responding, I, I was thinking to your friends that you that did you say? Not anything? that I recall. But okay. I do have one that she is very strongly towards Trayvon. Right. And she's also African American, so. Right. And like I said, everybody's entitled to their opinion, and nobody says any opinion on, no, oh, I think you should know. Now, are you going to vote in favor of convicting Mr. Uh, Zimmerman just based on the fact that you have a friend that's African-American? That's not Facebook? what I said. No, I, I'm saying you're not <laughs> going to do that, right? No, okay. I shouldn't. Okay. You understand the law, you've got to make a decision on what happens in this court. Correct. Right? I wasn't saying that you were saying okay. that. I want to make sure. So the bottom line is you can agree to listen to all the evidence that happens in this courtroom only mm -hmm. and make your decision on that. 
Correct. Right? And then follow, obviously, the law. Correct. I would okay. prefer someone else do it because I really can't be here for the, for the trial. I really can't. I can't afford it at my job either. I need okay. to go back to work. Well, that was my next question about <laughs> the, the sequester because you were asked and you stated that uh, it would not be a hardship or it would not be an insurmountable hardship. Correct. But at work I was advised I do not get paid for this. And unfortunately, like I did advise, I am a single mom. I'm the only head of household and I do have to look after my children. And your kids are minors? They're under the age of 14, yes. Okay. So even though you realize anybody that's going to sit on the jury is going to make, it's going to be a hardship for them. In your opinion, you believe yours is an insurmountable hardship? Well, I'm basically alone here. Right. So I have to keep asking friends to look after them, and that's a burden sometimes to people. Sure. And I do not like to burden anyone. I take full responsibility of my children. Right. Because in this case, in addition to taking anywhere we estimate from two to four weeks, the jury is actually be sequestered. That's correct. Okay. So now that you're aware of that, you believe that is going to be a yes, hardship for you? Yes, it is 100 percent, unfortunately. Okay. All right. May we approach the bench, Your Honor? Okay. Please be seated. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Take a deep breath. You're still going to be um, referred to as juror H35, and the attorneys are going to ask you questions about the questionnaire you filled out on Tuesday morning, and we're going to begin with Mr. De La Ronda. Good afternoon, ma'am. Um, as Judge Nelson indicated, we're asking you questions about the questionnaire, so about the publicity and that aspect of it. Um, 
think, were you one of the jurors that had a car issue one day in terms of coming here? That's Is me. everything all right regarding that? Um, I'm still getting it fixed. I borrowed my mother in law's oh, car. Okay. So. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm glad to hear that in that sense that you were able to get here. I'm sorry about the car okay. uh, repair issue. Uh, you mentioned in your questionnaire that um, you heard about this from the news. Uh, that he's being investigated for the death of Trayvon Martin and happened in Sanford, Florida. That's all you really needed. Um, actually, I didn't know that Facebook, it, you had to write anything about Facebook, but okay. I did like something about the case on Facebook. You did do something about Yeah, it? I don't remember exactly what it was. It was a while ago, but I did like something on Facebook about it. I didn't write anything or anything like that. Okay, educate me a little bit about this. My wife and kids have Facebook. I don't. When you say you wrote something about it, or no, 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 no. I liked a picture. Okay. But I don't remember where it was from. It just came up on my wall, and that's what okay. I. Okay. Yeah. So, is there a picture of somebody in the case on fa on your Ooh, Facebook wall? Mm -hmm. Do you remember who that is? Um, Trayvon. Okay. And you just uh, what did you do? Captured and put it on there, or what? No, 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 no. I just like, it just comes up on your page, and I liked it. Okay. Would it still be on there? No, I don't think so. Okay. It the, happened a while ago. Oh, oh, I see. So at one point you saw it, and you liked it, and you put it on your Facebook, but it's no, no, not... No, no, no. I didn't put it on my Facebook. Okay. Tell me a little bit about that. I'm okay. Facebook, you yeah. have a wall, okay. and then you have your profile. Okay. Your wall has different people from all over sure. that write whatever they want to write. You. And you have the choice whether to like it or not. I don't remember what exactly it was about, but I liked it and I know his picture was on there. Okay. So was there commentary about him or about the case? Yes, that? but I didn't click on that. I didn't look at that okay. or anything. Do you remember what the picture of Trayvon Martin looked like that you put I liked? No, okay. I don't remember. Um, you mentioned in terms of exposure in the news, would that have been the local TV stations or the... Local. Okay. I watched the news. Um, I did never really got into the case or anything. I've seen some things, though. So, I mean, I, okay. I'm not really comfortable with it, to be honest. So You're not comfortable with what? With n just seeing things and then everyone telling me that I shouldn't see anything and I shouldn't know anything. And I've seen... I don't know exactly, but what I've told on the thing that he was charged with it, sure. so I'm not really. Like, no, there, there's nothing to be. We, you know, people. We're, we don't. We realize most people do not live under a rock somewhere, yeah. you know, in a cave, or they don't live in an isolated island. We realize people watch TV and stuff, right. and there's nothing wrong in doing that. The question is whether that would impact you yeah. in being able to sit set it aside. You don't believe it would. No, okay. I don't really know much right. about it or okay. have an opinion. Right. So what we're trying to find out from you is what you kind of know about it, what you remember hearing. And then second and most importantly are the three things. Number two is whether you can set it aside and you know whether if by chance you sit on the jury, if by chance you hear some evidence and it's contrary to what you saw. I also know that um, something about Trayvon buying Skittles. Okay. That's, that, that's all right. Don't 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 be um, don't be reluctant to tell us what you know because okay. you just tell us what you know. And if you don't know something, just as best you can remember. I'm, I'm assuming that by me asking these questions now, it's kind of in your mind, you're kind of thinking, yeah. okay, what do I know? What do I know? Okay. Just as best you can, take your time. Okay. You know, just sit back and get comfortable. And as best you can. So you remember something about Skittles. What else do you remember? Anything else? Um, I, okay. that's really do you remember anything about uh, what happened in terms of... Uh, Trayvon Martin dying and Mr. Zimmerman. Oh, I also know that um, Mr. Zimmerman um, was a security guard, and I think he was working. Okay. And, and I'm sorry I didn't write that on the paper. I was, I that, was my first let, time. No, no, no. That's that's all right. Okay. Believe it or not, some jurors you just put news, you know, and okay. that's it. So, I mean, don't feel like you haven't, okay. you, you intentionally left stuff out. What else do you kind of remember about the case? Um, Huddy. I've heard that okay. everywhere. So. Okay. Um, that um, Trayvon was wearing. Sure. Um, do you remember uh, back, it happened in February of last year, do you remember? Yeah, I don't remember when it happened. Sure. And my question is, is your um, first impressions or contact in terms of the media, was it back then or was it more recently um, when I you heard about the case? I didn't have an opinion about it. Or no, 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 no. I'm asking whether you had an opinion, but when you first got exposed in terms of 
hearing about the case, were you, you were living in, and don't tell me where you, what the address is, but you were living in, the, in Seminole County back in February of last year? Yes. Okay. Do you remember about the time that it happened, whether you were aware of it happening? I will, I've seen it on the news, okay. yes. Okay. And you remember something about Skittles, something about Mr. Zimmerman being a security guard or some aspect of that, and then also a hoodie. What else do you remember or anything about the case? Um, I don't okay. really acknowledge right. of knowing much because I didn't really tune, I didn't tune sure. it out really. I didn't. Now, did you, um, do you read the newspaper either in, you know, the hard copy, the old fashioned way or did no, you read sir, it online? No, sorry, I didn't read um, Just watch the news and, okay. I mean, Facebook. Okay. You know. Now, Facebook apparently has a drop down Everyone menu. has their own opinions, I right. guess. And. Were you swayed one way or the other by people's opinions no, in sir. favor of or against uh, one side or the other? No. Okay. Did you ever express an opinion on any of those sites? No, I never talked about it. Okay. The, um, do you remember any photographs at all related to the case that you saw? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about those. Well, just um, on Facebook, the picture of Trayvon, I don't really remember okay. what it looked like. Okay. And then I would see George Zimmerman's face on TV. Okay. Anything else you can remember? Any other photographs of either Mr. Zimmerman, Trayvon Martin, or um, any other aspect of the case? No. Okay. How about any kind of uh, court proceedings, like what happened in court, you know? No, Nothing I don't about know that. Anything. How about any kind of recordings, either video or audio, that you heard about this case, if, if there were any? Mm, no, I don't okay. re recall of knowing anything. Okay. I mean, I watch the news, but I can't remember. Sure. My memory doesn't, okay. I wasn't interested in it, so. That's fine. Um, how about anything associated with the case that wasn't the case itself, that would then involve the shooting itself? Uh, anything about any other aspect of what was going on in the community about the time it happened or thereafter? No. Nothing, brings, nothing rings a bell? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the media in its coverage of this case was biased one way or the other uh, in terms of either in favor of Mr. Zierman or in favor of Trayvon Martin? Um, I don't really know. Okay. I don't really know. Right. When you listen uh, to TV, do you, um, would you, do you feel the media is besides giving the news, actually sometimes gives commentary about what's going on. Can you ask and me? My, my question is, have you ever heard of anybody commenting about the case? Oh yeah, my okay. family, okay. a lot of people talk. Let's talk about, well, let's talk about the family now. Did they give you their opinions about what was happening on the case or uh, how they felt one way or the other? Um, I mean, just like when I would be around my family, if it came up, I mean, it would come up and they would say, you know, what was going on, but not really anything like, to an extreme, they would just be like, oh, the George Zimmerman thing right. and okay. how it happened in Sanford and it was so close and it was such a big case. Okay. Anything about uh, the family telling you any other facts other than what you've mentioned right now? Um, yes. My father did tell me that he was bonded out recently. Okay. Any, anything else? That's it. Okay. Of my knowledge of okay. what I remember. Um, Anything about friends that they told you about what they had heard? No, I don't really have many friends. I keep to my family. Okay. If you were to, if somebody came into town that you knew and uh, they asked you, what's going on here about this case? What would you tell them the case is about? Nothing because I'm a juror. Okay. Very <laughs> good answer. But assuming you could talk, assuming you were a juror. Right. Okay. And by the way, you're really following the judge's admonitions and instructions to a T. The question is, if you were a juror and you were asked by a, a relative or a friend just came into town and goes, what the heck is going on? What's this case about? What would you tell them? Um, that the man was a security guard and an altercation happened. I don't know. Okay. And the boy was wearing a hoodie and going to get Skittles, I guess. Okay. That's all I would <laughs> um, and, it's, and if they asked you, the person asked you, altercation, what do you mean by that? Could you elaborate in any more way other than it was an altercation? No, I, I guess there was a gun involved because okay. he was shot, but I, that's all I know. Okay. I'm trying to prod your mind so you can remember <laughs> anything else. Maybe not doing a good job of it, but it's perfectly all right if that's all you remember. 
question is, your pigs and joy. You listen to all the evidence. You're sitting there, and then as uh, a witness says, you know something. You remember it a little bit different. Nothing what the witness is saying, but you all of a sudden in your mind go, oh, hold on, there was something on TV that said, you know, something different to witness. Would you rely on what you remember on TV or what the witness said? What the witness said, of course. Can you agree to disregard whatever you... Uh, the media is not what the case is about. Okay, so you agree to completely disregard what's been Correct. on the media? Yeah. Is there any doubt that you could do that? No, absolutely okay. not. All right. Um, the other aspect that I want to cover very briefly is in the question you filled out, I mentioned about uh, hardship, insurmountable hardship. We realize that people, when we ask the service jurors, it's going to be a hardship, you know, it's an right. inconvenience, mm -hmm. uh, some more extremes than other. But there's been a, I guess, an estimate as best we can as to how long the jury will take. Once we get the jury picked, we're still in the process of picking one. Right. Once we actually start the trial, we expect it to be anywhere from two to four weeks. Mm -hmm. And the court has also made a determination, the judge has made a determination that the jury will be sequestered so that you know the media doesn't, you won't be exposed to publicity about the case. With those two uh, facts, they would not cause an insurmountable hardship for you? Is that um, I'm moving right at the moment. I'm in the process of packing, but, and I have to move out by the end of the month, but that's... Okay. Right are, are you moving like out of the don't tell me where you live right now but are you moving like out of the county or no just, okay, um, so you're actually, not moving like to Miami or Detroit no 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 no, no I'm moving to Bethlehem Florida so I'm sorry Bethlehem I believe that's Orange County actually I'm okay. on the line I live in Winter okay. Park okay. The, the, uh, that's all right you're not getting in trouble or anything I'm just trying to keep you anonymous in terms of where you live oh, okay uh, I guess the city or where you mm -hmm. it's not just your actual address but so you're going to be moving at some point at yes. towards the end of the month? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a moment, Your Honor. Yes, thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. O'Mara. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. My name is Mark O'Mara. I present George Zimmerman in the middle. Robert Hershaw on this side, and Don West is my co-counsel. A few more questions to follow up on what Mr. Del Rionda asked you, the main purpose of which is to sort of drill in a little bit so that we know what you know about the case already. It's okay, whatever you know about the case, or as little as you know about the case, we just want to know what you know, um, because then we're going to tell you basically to forget about it all. So uh, my purpose is to see what it is that you remember, but the main instruction that you need to follow from the court is that whatever you might remember about the case, whatever pictures or whatever it might be, you would need to agree with us that that is not what we call evidence, right? right. And it's not what you would consider in reaching your verdict. Right. Unless you hear it from a witness of or course. see it in evidence. Yes. Any concern with being able to do that? No, absolutely not. Okay. You had said that you saw at least one photograph of Trayvon Martin um, online. Mm -hmm. And can you describe it for me at all? No, I don't. It was a while ago. I don't remember. I just liked it. I don't even remember what it had to do with it, but okay. I liked it. And um, can you tell me what it was that you read about or knew about when you first saw it that led to your decision to like it? No, I can't tell you. I just remember it was something about it. Okay. Was that something that... I just remember seeing a picture of him and liking it. I don't remember if it was, you know, if there's different things that people put on there. I don't even remember what it was. It wasn't one of my friends that had put, posted it or anything. It was just something okay. that was on there. Well, the reason for my inquiry is I want to see if, in fact, you decide to like something concerning Trayvon Martin as opposed to something concerning George Zimmerman. Okay. So e explain why it was something... Was yeah, it, I don't think it didn't have anything to even do with the case, I don't think. Okay. I think it was more of a racial thing than anything. Okay. Did you think that the way this was covered by the media um, was infusing a racial element to it? Um, I don't really know that much. I mean, on Facebook, there's different racial things, um, like music artists or something like that, that have said something about it. But 
tell me about what you've, some of the comments of the people that you've seen on Facebook, those um, who have commented about the case, tell me what they've said. Um, not really anything that anyone's commented, more like just, um, I don't know, I guess with the whole hoodie thing and black people wearing hoodies, I don't really know much, just that it had been a big thing for younger people or something like that. I don't, I'm not too familiar. I don't okay. Um, again, tell me if you can what you remember about that issue of whether it was on Facebook or in general media, what you had heard about with this issue regarding a hoodie or... Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. I just remember, I vaguely remember, just because of this is that's going on, I wouldn't even remember it if I wasn't here because it's not that important to me in my life. Mm -hmm. But I remember seeing it and it was something to do with racial and to like or not like if you're racist or something like that. It was something like that, I don't know. Do you think there's anything about that element that there may be potential racial overturns in this case that would affect you in being able to sit as a juror? No, absolutely not. I don't form a, an opinion over what I've seen. Over I form color. an opinion over information that I hear. As opposed to the As opposed to skin. the truth or you know what's going on with the real thing not media. <laughs> okay. Have you seen any pictures of George Zimmerman before On the this news. Week? On the, just on the news. Just maybe his picture would come up. I, mm -hmm. I know I've seen his face on the news. Sure. Any pictures that depicted any type of injuries or physical attributes of his? No, I haven't seen anything. And I think Mr. Tillerione may have asked you this, so bear with me if he has, but if you were asked, I think he asked, if a friend of yours had asked you what this case was about, um, if I asked you to come up with just three things that you thought were the most significant about this case that stick out in your mind, what would they be? Mm, I don't know if I could really tell you that, I don't know. Okay, just in your mind, so whatever they might be. I don't know because I'm not too informed with the case. And whatever the three things I've told you is basically everything I know. Okay. So I couldn't, that would just be telling you again. And you said that you at least had one conversation or, or a note of talking to your dad about it. Has he discussed with you anything more about the case? No, I don't really talk to my father often. So it just Any came fan? Up. I'm sorry? It just came up one time when I was talking to him, but I don't, I haven't talked to him. In, a while. So. Any family members that you've discussed this with that we mm -hmm. haven't talked about? No, not since I've been here. Maybe in the past someone has said something to me about it. And my, I don't know, I have family get-togethers and they talk about all different things. I'm not 100% sure. It was never like a topic that we just talked about, nothing like that. It might have came up, I'm not going to, I'm going to be honest. And as I started out with, should something come to mind? that you remember, whether it was a picture you may have missed seeing or anything like that, can you agree that if you didn't hear about it in a courtroom from a witness or from a piece of evidence that you would not consider it in your deliberations? No, absolutely not. And let's say you're on the jury, you've been through the trial, you're now in the back doing what jurors do, which is deliberate and decide right. on a verdict, um, and some other juror brings up something that they remember that didn't come from the courtroom. How would you react to that? Uh, no one's opinion matters, but my opinion. When we come together, obviously we have to discuss about it, but whatever someone else says is not, it's just what I think and how I feel when it comes to their opinion. And you asked, um, you answered a question that you understand that this trial could last um, two to four weeks, correct? Yes. And um, the judge has suggested or, or ruled that because of the potential of outside influence on the jury that it's going to be a sequestered jury, meaning that you'll be spending right. not just the days with us, but nights as well. Um, and that's something that, though it's going to be an inconvenience, as it would be to anyone, that's not something that would be impossible for you to accomplish? 
like I said, I'm moving at the end of the month and I have to move. And okay. I, I, you know, I want to be there for America and do this, but I have obligations. And I didn't know to write that in the paper. I didn't know to write all that kind of stuff because I'm new to this. And I have social anxiety very bad, so this is very hard for me. But I didn't know that I should write that on the paper, but I am moving. And I have to move by okay. the 29th. So. All right. Well, first of all, if this is you being anxious, you're doing fine. So don't worry about it. Take a breath. You're doing very well. And um, but for having to move, um, if that was able to be accomplished somehow, um, other than that, you would be able to serve with us, correct? I would, other than me moving, yes. Okay. And um, you did say you have some family here in town. Yes. Okay. So if we had, or if you had to put more of the responsibility on them to help get things like furniture moved and utility deposits put in place and all that, you would have those people to assist you? If I had to be here, yes. Okay. And um, what may well happen, should you be chosen on the jury, is that decision would not be made for a few days mm -hmm. and um, you would have some time to plan before we would actually begin the trial and only when we begin the trial would you be sequestered. So with a few days lead time, without assisting, taking care of that issue? Um, not a few days, no, but I would get someone to help me if I had need be to be here. Okay. You might just have a moment. Huh? And I've sort of defaulted to your Facebook friends, um, and I think that you've said you haven't had a lot of discussions, but just to clear, whether it be Facebook friends or real life friends, or whatever we now call them to show the difference nowadays, um, have you discussed it with any of your friends in any significance that we haven't talked Not about? Not that I recall. Okay. And I mean, my about, family would talk about it and stuff. I might have said one word about it or something. Okay. But I've never had a full-blown discussion about this case at all, because it wasn't... Interesting to me. I'm None of your family members had any strong opinions that they related no, to you about this? it wasn't a talk like that. And um, do you go to church? Yes, I do. Any conversations or sermons or anything mentioned about this in your church? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Just one way or the other, pray for families or tragedies no, it's or never anything came like up. that? This case has never came up. Okay. Thanks very much for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. If you'll remain seated for just one moment, and counsel, when you're ready, please approach.
please be seated, everyone. And before I get started with anything, let me make sure I have um, those of you here who I needed here. Um, so when I read your juror number, if you'd just raise your hand. H69, H81, H86, A, um, I5, I14, I19, I24, I33, I-44, I-46, I-49, I-54. Okay, that group. Do I also have here I-64, I-65, I-66, I-68, I-76, and I-79? Okay, those of you from H through I-54, I need you back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. The deputies will tell you where you're supposed to be. I-64, I-66, I-65, I-68, I-76, and I-79, if you'll report in Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Okay, before I let you all go, just so we know, I'll, I'll say your numbers again so there's no confusion. These are the people that will report tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. H69, H81, H86, I5, I14, I19, I24, I33, I44, I46, I49, I54. The following will be reporting Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. I64, I65, I66, I68, I76, and I79. Are you all having your mind which group you're in? Okay, before I let you go for tonight, I'm going to give you the admonishments again. You're not to read or listen to any radio, television, or newspaper reports about this case. Um, you're not to, do I have your assurance that you'll abide by that instruction? Yes. You're not to discuss the case amongst yourselves nor with anybody else. So if anybody tries to talk to you about the case, please leave them at once and report the matter to the deputy. That includes anything about the case, the jury selection process, the questionnaires, or anything. Do I have your assurance that you'll abide by that instruction? Yes. You're not to use any type of an electronic device to get on the internet to do any independent research about the case, people, places, things, terminology, or anything. Do I have your assurance that you'll abide by that instruction? Yes. And you're not to read or create any emails, text messages, Twitters, tweets, blogs, or social networking pages about the case. Do I have your assurance that you'll abide by that instruction? Yes. Okay, and I'm going to let you go now for the evening. Have a good evening, and again, thank you for your patience. We have one more group coming in. Okay, please be seated. And we have with us, with us here right now jurors H7. H18, H29, and H35. Okay, I'm going to excuse you until Wednesday at 9 a.m. Um, and the deputies will tell you where they want you to report Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Um, while you're on recess from this case until then, I'm going to give you the admonishments, first of which is you're not to read or listen to any radio, television, or newspaper reports about this case. Do I have your assurance that you will abide by that instruction? Yes, You're not to discuss the case amongst yourselves or with anybody else. That includes family, friends, co-workers, or anybody. If somebody tries to talk to you about the case, please leave them at once. Do I have your assurance that you will abide by that instruction? You're not to use any type of a um, device to get on the internet to do any independent research about this case. That includes people, places, things, terminology, anything whatsoever. Do I have your assurance that you'll abide by that instruction? 
and you're not to read or create any emails, text messages, Twitters, tweets, blogs, or social networking pages about this case. Do I have your assurance that you'll abide by that instruction? Yes. With those instructions, um, you uh, will report back Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Have a good evening. Thank you. Um, Mr. Zimmerman, let me make sure the door gets closed. Thank you. um, you've had the opportunity yesterday and, I mean, Friday. Um, I think I talked to you about this up until Friday at lunch, but you had an opportunity Friday and again today on Monday to uh, listen to the individual questions, the questioning of the potential jurors. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And you had already reviewed their juror questionnaires? Yes, Your Honor. And you had an opportunity to talk with your attorneys about um, the jurors and the questioning of them? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And they've made certain decisions about certain jurors. Are you in agreement with those decisions? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much. You may be seated. The court will be in recess. Let me know when you're ready to begin the Fry hearing. Or let the deputies know and they'll yes, let me know. And we'll begin. Okay. The court will be in recess.